Hello, this is a week six overview video. Uh, well, I'll just briefly des describe what I expect you to do this week. Um, there are, there's not a lot, um, but let's get to it. So um, here in week six, um, you can see you have some reading to do. It's um, the same, everything's an argument. It's chapter 22 of documenting sources. I want you to focus on this chapter because it, it describes um, everything I want you to know about doing citations. Um, most of its review for the references and even the in-text citations um, is just there to give you some help if you're worried about using in-text citations. Um, there are a lot of examples. Let me scroll up here. Let's go through all the way to the top. Um, so the, at the beginning is just the introduction to the section. You can go ahead and read that. Uh, but I want you to focus on is um, the idea that they present sort of this signal phrase, which I've referred to as like uh, reporting verbs or reporting phrases. Um, idea just ex saying like here, according to Brandon, and then they have the date of uh, when Brandon had published the information. Uh, this. Um, this example presents the page numbers. I would really appreciate it if you put the page numbers into your citations. Um, generally, they are not necessary, but they are expected depending on the classes that you do. So I'd like you to focus on presenting the page numbers, um, taking the time just to take that extra step because some of your teachers will ask you to put the page numbers in. And so if you can start that habit early on, it's, it's helpful later. But you can see here, like, as Johnson 2005 demonstrated, you have that reporting phrase that's there. Um, and then this gives you the, the end example. So we had the, pre the previous example, sort of that beginning example where you would initiate the sentence using the author's name. And then this example, putting the author at the end using the author's surname, and then the date of the publication. And you can see in this example, the, um, the page number is not provided. And so here's another example using multiple authors. Um, so it's fine if you need to, if you have many authors in your example, you just put them all together like you would using a serial clause and then the date of the publication. Um, they, what's nice about this is they give you some really great examples of reporting verbs that you could just adopt. So verbs like cited, uh, drew, that we already mentioned demonstrated. Um, so just pay attention and, and don't worry about using those reporting verbs. Those are common. Uh, there's already the ones that I gave you last term. So you could go back to the reporting verbs worksheet that I gave you last term uh, when we started working on this. But just looking at the ones that are used in this style guide are helpful, like words like uh, condu conducted. Those are really great examples that you can adopt on your own. So go through, skim these, not just for how each source is cited, but um, looking at it for the language use as well. So looking at some examples. And then um, at the end of this, so it goes through and gives you several examples. And then there, there is the list of references. I expect you to add your page, so it's a separate page of your reference list to your first draft that you're submitting this week. And yeah, you can just remember that, that you can go through this again to look at the style guide. You know, it, it tells you exactly what you're expected to do. It's an alphabetical list, right? Uh, they appear on a separate page or pages at the end of your paper with the heading references. So references should begin, and I'll show you the example that's provided. It's uh, double spaced after the heading and, and uh, begin your first entry. So put that heading on there, then double space, and then start the list, double space the entire list. And again, I'll show you an example. And then from there, uh, you put you know how to put it together. We, we did it already in the annotated bibliography, but just pay attention, L review your references to make sure that they look accurate. Um, and if you need any help with that, make sure that you asked me for help and you know don't forget the hanging indent or we use that in Google Docs. So just go back, check your reference list again before you attach it to your draft. And I, by attach, I mean just make it the, the last page uh, and it's a new page. So 
if your draft ends at the bit at the top of a page make sure you go all the way to a new fresh page and add your references uh, in an entirely new page so if you finish on page five your reference list begins on page six okay so there's no text uh, from your draft on the reference page it's totally separate um, so here they give you some examples uh, in your reference list in case you've forgotten or you need extra help feel free to go through and look at those examples um, you know even things like government documents in case that you came across any new material that you're using go ahead and check it out uh, and you know there are ample places on the internet you can look at and you can go back to our Moodle on from 102 and um, get on to Citation Fox as well. And uh, so if you need any, if you need to check out the 102 Moodle and um, go ahead and do that, if you're having trouble accessing it, let me know and I'll um, add any of the sources that I put in 102 onto 103. And so there's again, just descriptions of how to create your reference list. And then at the bottom here, let's say scroll through this, is the examples of the guidelines uh, that I expect you to follow in the style, just really structure of your draft and so you see you have a running head here start with running head colon and then the um the header you know you see in this case it's just the conceptual title um so that's fine you don't have to put your whole title there and then you have your title page so a full description of your title your name and the, the name of the school so just like it shows here and then at the bottom of the page you have the author note explaining why this paper was prepared so make sure you add that in there and then you go on to the next page where we have our title, right? It's totally centered here at the top. You see you have, it doesn't say running head anymore, just regular the, the running head and then the page number here on the right, okay? So if you're having any trouble with doing any of those, please let me know and I can give you help. And then indent each paragraph. Here you can see the margins are quite large, but that's because it's just annotated as an example. Make sure your margins are one inch and that your uh, your font is a 12 point font. Uh, you want to bold any of the headings that you end up putting. If you have any headings in your paper, you don't have to have headings in your paper, but if you do make sure they are bolded, right? The font size is not any different. They are simply just bolded, right? And then this just points out to make sure that you put in your parenthetical in-text citations. Right? So it's just giving you an example of all of that. And then if you keep scrolling, it gives an example of your reference list. So in case you need a reminder of what your reference list should look like, you see here the running head is still there, the page number is still there. Um, you see that this is not bolded, it's just centered, so the, the title. There's a double space and then everything is double spaced throughout, right? So there's, there's no extra space, it's just double spaced with the hanging indents as it goes through, okay? So if you have any questions about putting together your references or in-text citations, um, please let me know. And other than that, um, I expect in this week's forum, so just for participation purposes, don't forget these are just for participation purposes, that um, I just give what you're supposed to do here. You should be reading page 885 through 890, which is just the description that I showed you uh, from everything's argument um, about in-text citations, um, and then post an example of one of your own in-text in citations. So meaning that you are posting the context of it. So you're showing how you used the in-text citation in your, in, or what, what you might do to utilize the in-text citation. So not just the citation, that's not what I'm expecting. You actually show the sentence or the sentences that incorporate the in-text citation. And then you're, I expect you to give feedback to one classmate, just letting them know how you think they did on the in-text, making sure that it makes sense or it's right or their usage of certain verbs or whatever it might be. Does this, just any sort of feedback that you think they, they could use. Um, to move forward with their citation. Uh, and then if we go back to week six. So you can see there's not much just the short, just and really there's not much to read of them. Look at the examples, uh, post in the forum, and then post your first draft by Sunday. All right, it's the 17th. So that's what I expect you to do. There's not any additional reading or any additional assignments at all. This is what I expect you to work on this week. All right, so any questions, let me know. Um, and good luck working on your draft. 
in the draft, I do give a long description of what I expect you to do in your draft. I say that um, you don't have to submit anything polished. Uh, you won't receive a grade uh, that takes the level of polish into account. I only want you to submit a draft that demonstrates you put some work into the complete construction of the fuse. Right? Uh, you don't have to have um, anything that's totally finished at all. Uh, you should take some time to revise your introduction based on my comments. Um, you know, and you could think of it like an outline plus, like I'd like to see the organization in the form of topic sentences. That would be nice to see some topic sentences linking back to the thesis to so show some sort of structure that you're using. Um, you can demonstrate your usage of arguments of definition, arguments of fact, um, how you're incorporating those, so that would be beneficial. Use the argument outline that you put together using, you guys all put one using the Tolman model together. Uh, you can demonstrate how you're putting that together by sort of fleshing out some of the ideas in that. In that. Um, and then any sort of, uh, any sort of pieces that show that you are developing a part of what your what ideas that you're working on. Um, I, I say here at the end, uh, I would like to see that you follow the guidelines of the APA style, the, what I just mentioned um, from the text, and then um, make sure that you're formatting and including your reference page. Um, so, and I attach that again here in case you missed it early on uh, and again make sure you're using 12.5 one inch margins and double spacing all right so any other questions let me know um, and that's it thank you